this is what my lotto game looks like when I run it. So let me click run here and it says, pick six numbers and then play lotto. Now, if I pick just a couple of numbers and notice as I click them, they change color to yellow. Pretty cool, huh? If I hit play lotto before I've picked six, it says you must pick six numbers first. So your program must force the user to pick six numbers before they play lotto, right? And let's see, do I have six? Well, let's see. I guess, oh, I lost. And actually notice if I try to click more numbers, it says, hey, you've picked six numbers. You can't, you know, you can't play more, just play lotto. So um, every time I play lotto, the computer generates random numbers, one through 40, right? Just like you have a choice of one through 40 and then compares them. So I guess none of the numbers matched. So it tells me I lost. Now, if I, I can play again and the computer will keep uh, making random numbers. So if I play again, the computer has new, I've lost twice in a row, <laughs> selects new random numbers. So every time I click play lotto, the computer picks a bunch of random numbers and boy, am I ever gonna win? You should try this yourself. Actually, if I hold down play lotto a bunch of times, gee, I haven't even won yet. Oh yeah, I guess I won $3, right? I win $3 if three out of the six numbers match. And actually this is pretty close to real lotto odds. I don't recommend playing lotto. If four out of six match, you win 40 bucks, five out of six, $5,000. Six out of six, you win $10 million. Well, that's not likely to happen too often. See, I'm just going through, ooh, I must, ooh, I guess I must have gotten four numbers to match because I won 40 bucks there. Anyway, uh, you can uh, play the game by keep clicking play lotto or I can pick new numbers and that refreshes the page here and it just allows me to pick six numbers again. I'm going right in a row there. And again, it doesn't let me pick more than six and I'll play lotto. Yeah, well, no big surprise, I didn't win. All right, let's look at the code. A lot of the code for this program is actually written for you. You only need to write two functions. All of this whole screen display business, this is all done for you. That's that's all of this right here. This is all HTML code. And I, I construct this little lotto board for you. These are just a bunch of buttons in a table. And you can see input type button, ID B1, yeah, I, button ID B1, that stands for button one, is the button that's value is one. See how cleverly I named that? And actually, when you click a button, it runs a function called pick, and it passes it the value that's on the button. So for example, if you click button number 12, here's button number 12, its ID is B12, the value on the button is 12, I think we said that already, and it runs the function called pick and it passes it the value 12. The value 12 is passed to the function pick. And actually, if we scroll down just a little bit, we can look at the function pick. So this is a function that you're gonna have to write. And I give you a whole lot of comments here. Look at all those comments I'm giving you. This is the function pick. And I don't, oh, look at that. I already, I already, you already saw the first line of the function pick there. So the function pick has a variable in parentheses called num. Now this variable num is set to whatever button the user clicks. If they click 30, num will be equal to 30. So the only thing that you have to do in your function pick is as the user clicks buttons, and I'm giving, well, I give you a lot of comments to explain exactly how to do this. Uh, as they click buttons, you have to add each number to an array and the array is named pick. Now. I sometimes discourage you from making variables outside of a function, but th it kind of makes sense in this context. These are global variables, one lost and picked. These, these variables really apply to the entire game. Uh, this obviously one keeps track of how many times they won, obviously, or how much money they won, I guess. Lost is how much money they lost and each, each time they play, it costs them a buck. Um, and picked is an array that gets filled with the six numbers that the user picks. So every time they click a button, you have to add that to the array picked. And you also have to change the color of the button. And I kind of explain, well, I do explain, I give you the code for that here. I tell you how to change the number of the button. You're gonna do a document.getElementID, B, B, of course, all the buttons are named B something. So if you click 12, for example, B12, you're changing the background to yellow, okay? Um, that's about all there is to it. And you can determine if a button is already clicked or not by checking the value of it. You know, you can see if it already equals yellow. All right, so the function pick, and again, I give you a lot of comments here to help you out. You're gonna complete the function pick and then just one other function, which we're gonna take a look at. 
the only other function that you have to write is the play function. And here's what it looks like. And again, I give you a whole lot of comments here to show you what it's supposed to do and what's going on. Um, pick function is a pretty short function. Play is a little bit more complicated and the play function gets run when the user clicks the button play lotto. So the play function fills an array called rand with six random numbers to one from one to 40. Uh, and you know how to make random numbers, but what makes this a little bit tricky is that you want to make sure that each number that gets added is a unique number. In other words, you can't add the same number more than once, right? The computer must pick six unique numbers between one and 40. You can't have two thirties in there, for example, no repeats. Um, so you have to make sure that six numbers go into rand and, and check to make sure that no duplicates are getting added. And you notice that my numbers are sorted from smallest to largest, that's optional. But if you want to sort them, it's really pretty easy. There is a sort function. I know the syntax looks a little bit weird, but I even give you it in the, in the comments here. If you want to sort your array called random, you just say rand.sort. So that's all there is to it. And then after you have filled your array, you just need to compare the computer picked array to the your numbers array, the picked array. And uh, well, the computer picked array, I'm sorry, is called rand. And you have to compare that to the other array, the picked array, and see how many numbers match. And um, either subtract a buck if nothing matches or add money depending on how many numbers match. And I give you, again, I give you a lot of comments in here. So yeah, there's a little bit of tricky stuff, but this is your last project for the course and I think you can handle it. There's gotta be some tricky stuff in here. You, you know that. All right, good luck. Thanks so much for watching.